Have you ever pondered how the stories of our slumbers might weave themselves into the tapestry of our waking lives? Good evening, my intrepid listeners. This is Paul, and tonight on Stories Philippines Podcast, I shall escort you to the very edges of credulity and back again. Pour yourself something warm. Let comfort be your anchor as we delve into a tale so unnerving that it will leave the boundaries of reality in tatters. We cast our eyes upon the province of Legaspi, an idyllic expanse in the Philippines where the quiet is a blanket that soothes as much as it shrouds. This is where Luis, a man whose days had been steeped in the supernatural, never found his life touched by the ephemeral entities that danced through the fireside tales of his barrio. That is, until a night of fitful dreams grasped him by the mind and drew him into the realm of the unfathomable. As Luis lay entrapped in sleep's embrace, he found himself traversing the desolate expanse of Highway 7. This was no ordinary thoroughfare. Rather, it was lined by the infamous Lakes of San Quentin, seven mirrors to the sky, known as much for their beauty as for the phantoms that were rumored to skulk within their depths. Beneath the glow of a watchful moon, a figure suddenly punctuated the stillness, a woman in the throes of desperation, her gestures wild against the calm of the night. Her terror was silent but palpable, commanding Luis to still his vehicle's hurried passage. Her presence was akin to that of a wraith from an era bygone, her garments frayed and her gaze saturated with the terror of eons. Before Luis could make sense of her plea, before her narrative could intertwine with his, she vanished into the lunar haze, leaving him to the engulfing silence, her essence retreating into the dark embrace of the dense foliage lining the road. In the void left by her absence, a peculiar disquiet took root within him. Around him, an ominous stillness prevailed, an oppressive quiet that seemed to be thick with watchers concealed within the night. A primitive instinct screamed within Luis to escape, to tear away from the unseen scrutiny that pierced through the dark. Jolted awake, Luis found himself in the sanctuary of his own chamber, the ghost of the dream clinging to him like the morning mist. But as he sought the comfort of reality, a new terror began to unfold. The distinct sound of footsteps, the click-clack of heels upon gravel, advancing with purpose toward his abode. Frozen beneath his blanket, Louis was held captive to the sound as it encircled his home, a relentless specter refusing to be exorcised by dawn's impending light. Despite the refuge offered by his bed, the spectral steps were an incessant reminder that some dreams refuse to be bound by sleep. Now, years removed from that haunting encounter, Luis's memory often wanders back to the desolate highway and the apparition that pleaded for his aid. Was it naught but a dream, spun from his own fascination with the world beyond? Or had a spectral hand reached through the veil to beckon him to seek deliverance through his intervention? So, my listeners, as we draw the curtain on our journey this evening, ponder upon the shadowed corridors we visit as we slumber. They might not merely be our subconscious playgrounds. They could be voyages into realms untold, where lost spirits tread the same soil underfoot as the living. This is Paul, your beacon in the night, advising you to step cautiously within the realm of dreams. Let them be a solace, not a source of strife, a clear glass through which to gaze, not a fog that obscures. Until we congregate again to partake in the unexplained, may your rest be undisturbed by phantoms and the lantern of logic remain lit even amidst the unknown. Good night, and remember, when the narrative of the night crosses into day, 
we must question where the boundaries lie, if they exist at all. Thank you.